is a program we're trying to find out what are the steps our Lord are asking us to do in order for us to follow Him. And we went through many steps. And today we're going to speak of the sixth step, which is farm the land. Follow me. We'll be right back. Welcome back to our program, Follow Me, Farm the Land. A very famous, probably the most famous parable of all parables is the parable of the sower. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell on wayside, and it was trampled down, and the birds of the air devoured it. Some fell on the rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away, because it lacks moisture. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. But others fell on the good ground, sprang up, and yielded a crop. A hundredfold when he had said these things, he cried, he said, He who has ears for hearing, let him hear. And I'll go through some steps how a sower needs to sow the land. And you as a person, what are the things you need to follow, to follow Christ? The very first thing is, the sower spreads the seeds on all the land. He does not discriminate between the land that will give fruits and the land that will not. At least in that parable, the sower who is our Lord, and if we need to follow him, we need to be like him. He really spread his seeds all over even on the soils that did not bring forth fruits. And maybe that's similar to 2 Timothy when St. Paul says, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Do not be lazy in speaking about the Bible everywhere and in anywhere. Number two, the sawyer knows the kinds of the lands and expects the results. The person who is really to follow him knows the soils and knows the results. And he is able to recognize the listener's ability to the Word of God. That doesn't mean he should not speak to every and, ev and anyone, but also he needs to follow up the thorny soil and the hard, rocky soil. He also needs to follow up the good soil, because as I'll say later, this good soil will be the evangelists and the people who go out to preach the Word of God. Number three, the sower focuses on the good ground. And as I was mentioning, while in, your, in order to follow Christ, you need to really be non-discriminatory on how to really give the seeds but also when you find a good soil, you need to prepare him well to become a preacher, to become a chosen one, to become the person who can evangelize. And that's what the Bible says by some fell on a good soil and that increased and produced 30, 60 and some hundred. Number four. The sower waters and fertilizes the land. We do not follow Christ blindly without doing our work as well. He actually throws the seeds and as a follower of him, I follow where he dropped the seeds. I follow where the person who has rocks in his life and I try to help him removing it. And I follow the person who has thorns and I try to help him removing it but I need to also know how to fertilize. Fertilize the land and actually waters the land. In Luke 13, our Lord mentioned that parable saying, but he answered and said to him, sir, let it alone this year also, until I dig around it, fertilize it, and if it bears fruit, well, but if not, after that, you can cut it. So I am 
following Christ while throwing the seeds, watering and helping him to grow his seeds. We'll be taking a short break and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Follow Me, and we are now discussing Farm the Land. Not only deny yourself and focus on the mission and fill your heart and enjoy the labor or favor the labor, but also you need to work to farm his land, to follow the seeds where it's dropped and you do your work. Doing your work by fertilizing the land because our Lord is the true vine, but he's also the vineyard. He is the one who says, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruits of itself unless it abides in vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. If you want to follow him, not just as a follower blindly, but you want to do two things. Abide in him so you don't lose the following, and in the same time, follow what he has dropped of seeds, and follow and produce and help produce seeds and, and fruits. Remember, there are branches that will be burnt and, and thrown, exactly as he said, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. They gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. So as a follower, unless you abide in him, you will be a withered branch. If you abide in him and you really want to farm the land, you will be abiding in his love, as he said, as the Father loved me, I also loved you. Abide in my love. Number five. The sower chooses the appropriate seed for the appropriate ground. Every ground needs a certain seed. And every seed knows which ground is supposed to grow in. And that's why St. Paul in 2 Timothy, he says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction of righteousness. Every seed, one seed could be a kind word, but the other could be inspirational. And a third could be to correct somebody. And the fourth could be actually reproach somebody and tell him off. Every seed needs to know where it is dropping. A real follower of Christ needs to know when to say what and where and to whom. He needs to know what to say and what time. Because there are people need the sympathizing words and there are people needs firm, affirmative, clear, strict words. Both are needed and both need to be in the follower. Number six, the sower is patient, waits for the rain before the harvest and sometimes waits for more rain and more rain and he doesn't take the crops until it satisfied all the nutrients. And that's what I mean by in grace and hope and the continuous prayer as a follower you need to continually pray for those seeds which were implanted even in a thorny soil. Your prayers may pluck some thorns out and your prayers may burn some thorns out and your prayers may grow some good soil out. Do not be fast or haste in asking for the fruits. Some fruits take month but others take years but your job is to follow follow the seeds when they drop and care for them care by fertilizing care by removing thorns care by removing stones but the result is up to god 
finally, the follower of Christ, the farming of the land, will toil, persist, put a lot of effort, but then delights, becomes so joyful at the end. The joy of the person who really collects his crops is amazing to the extent no one can know how much joy more than a farmer collecting and gathering his crops. As the psalm that we read in, in first hour of the day says that we come carrying our crops back to Christ. As if, as Joshua said, I and whom you have given me worship the Lord. And in John 4, he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. This is what I mean by following Christ and by farming the land. If you really want to be a follower of Christ and farming the land, you really need to be an active follower, not a blind passive follower. Our Lord wants people who follow Him with their hearts, but also see what He has done and follow it as well. If our Lord started work in a person with thorns or rocks, you need to follow. If He starts working with a person on good soil, this may be a great preacher, a great evangelist. You need to follow. But if you just leave alone everything and you don't follow anything, remember at the end, you are not the active follower that the Lord has sought. This was another episode of Follow Me. Hope to see you again in another episode. Thank you.